Hello guys, welcome back to part 3 of the limited set review. Today we're going to be looking at the black cards. We've gone through the white and the blue cards. Today we have black and we have red, green. I'm probably going to be gold and artifacts together because I don't think there are the many, including lands. And then we're also going to have a special one for the mystical archives that we're going to be seeing throughout the draft. Again, limited review, just a reminder. Also, my opinions might be wrong. You're okay to this, like it's you're probably correct to disagree with them and let me know your opinions on the, of, on the cards and let's get into it so first off we have arrogant poet one and a black for a 2-1 human warlock stats wise that's fine nothing nothing to write home about when it attacks you may pay two life if you do gain flying paying two life is a lot of life but uh it's not a must it's a maze that's nice you can give you evasion when you need it if you can suit it up a little bit or something along the, those lines, it might be fine. It's a 2 1 for 2 with a potential upside that's quite costly. It's filler, filler at best, it's nothing special. Um, wouldn't be happy, wouldn't be excited to have it in my deck, but I wouldn't be upset to have it in my deck either. Okay, we have the Black Mastery Net, Baleful Mastery, 3 and a black, so that's this one's quite cheap. Instant, so you, with all the masteries, you, get, you have an alternate cost. So this one, the ultimate cost is one and a black. If you cast for one and a black instead of three and a black, an opponent draws a card. Doesn't don't like that. Um, Exalt a creature planeswalker. So it's gonna be a easy splashable feed the serpent. Feed the serpent is a fine card. Now you have a three and a black instead of double black. That's fine. You're probably only ever gonna cast it for the alternate cost and desperate times so uh, this card is good uh it's good it's good removal it's very good removal exiling is awesome so good removal um very very playable card um, black so we're gonna look at it when we go through the green cards so now we have brackish trudge a fungus beast a three mana fungus beast with four two power toughness he enters the battlefield tapped that's okay you may pay one in the black to return from your graveyard to your hand activate only if you gain life this turn um, we've seen a couple ways before how t uh, to gain life, I'm guessing with green as well here, we have a, for example, this card we're going to be looking at in a uh, couple of videos time, you gain 4 life. A 4-2 for 3 would be, is good, it's good power, like, it's a good, it's a fine body, like, nothing too, nothing too special. Um, entering tap makes it, the return ability a bit less good. If you can gain life at instant speed, which I'm not 100% sure you can, um, makes it a lot better. <laughs> Because then you can block, trade, and then gain life, return to your hand, and play tapped, and then you'll have to wait another turn to block. So I think this first line is gonna really be annoying. But a 4 2 for 3 is fine. It's I, I feel like this is filler. I feel like even if you're gaining life, this card is not that exciting. But I think it's probably still fine. If it's fine if you're gaining life, otherwise, it's just filler. Uh, colors Blood Mage, 2 and the black for a 2 1, so not a good body to begin with. It's a vampire, it's a rare, when he enters the battlefield, choose one. I like choose abilities. Create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token with whenever this when this creature dies, you gain one life. And so, 3 mana for, uh, for 3 power, 2 toughness across 2 bodies. Uh, you draw a card and lose a life, so it's like a worse direction rager. Or you can exile target player's graveyard, I'm assuming this is more targeted... Um, for constructed, so we're looking at the first two lines of text here. Drawing a card and losing a life for three mana and a two-one body is fine. I wouldn't. I, I'm okay with that. That's decent. Um, the the two bodies will probably be fine against a, a go Y kind of deck. The I'm assuming the gain of life, as we've seen, does matter a little bit, but that's not too exciting. It's 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 a good card, but it's not great. I, I don't think I would first pick this card. I think that's probably better on commons than that. Confront the past. Black and X for a lesson sorcery. Sorcery lesson. Lesson sorcery? Either way. Uh, choose one. Return to the Planeswalker card. Yikes. So that's not coming up. Return twice. X player. Okay, so this is a super dead card in limited. Do not play this. I mean, if you have a planeswalker, even if you have a planeswalker, you're not playing this. You, you're, you're having the you know, sideboard as a lesson, and then hopefully you have a couple of uh, a learned cards, maybe get this, and then maybe have a planeswalker in your graveyard. But yeah, this card is just 
the, the this is probably gonna come up once in like thousands of games. This is not a good card. Next we have Crushing Disappointment three and a four. Three. Three and a black. Sorry about that. Uh, so it's a four man and instant. Each player loses two life, you draw two cards. So four mana to draw two cards and losing two life. We can compare this to Bitter Revelation. Bitter Revelation is also four mana. Is also is it instant speed? I'm not 100 sure now. But uh, you get to look at more cards. This one is just a straight up draw, draw two. Uh, being instant speed does push it a bit more. Um, in your slow decks, I would want this. In an aggressive deck, like aggressive or even mid rangey deck, I wouldn't be too excited about this. But in your slower blue black control league decks, um, yeah, that's fine. Losing life. I mean. I guess the lose to I don't think four mana to to make your opponent lose to life is not good enough to play an aggressive deck, and four mana would be too expensive with to not impact the board as well. So yeah, this card is uh, I if it's cried one at least or something, or he looks at three cards and he chose two, but yeah, no, like this, I'm I'm not a fan. I could be wrong, but I'm not a fan. Uh, essence Infusion, 1 and a black for a sorcery, puts 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature, gains life link until the turn. 2 mana to give 2 extra permanent power to a creature, that's decent, and gives life link, so this could be a good life swing in a, in a, in a race. Um, I'm not a fan of combat tricks at sorcery speed, well, so it's not a combat trick, it's a sorcery speed, but you know what I mean, I'm not a fan of pumps at sorcery speed, but I think the life link might push it just enough that I consider playing it as a, like a 22nd, 23rd card, but uh, definitely sideboard against aggressive decks, so you can swing the race, you make your blocker even better, you can even gain some life with your attack, so um, consideration for the main deck, definitely a sideboard card. I, I Twitch, I most read I Witch, anyways, so it's a 1 mana I bet, that's freaking weird, 1-1, one, one. so 1-1 one, one flyer for 1, when it dies, you learn. Um, no. 1-1 one, one flyer for 1 is yikes. Learn, we have, we have, my opinion, is it's going to be medium to not great. I don't think adding rummage to a lot of cards make the cards that much better. Um, and you're not going to have that many lessons in your board, I feel like. I feel they're going to be taken a lot higher than, than, than people are thinking. But, um... Not excited. I don't think I would play this card because the lessons are not even. You're probably not gonna have good lessons that it's gonna make worth playing Eye Twitch in your in your deck. Not a fan. Plunk one in the black for an instant. Target creature gets minus X minus X until the turn where X is seven minus the number of cards in the creature's controller's hand. So it could it, it could literally kill a seven seven if your opponent's empty-handed. This is decent removal. It's going to be mid to late game removal most of the time, uh, early game is going to be dead, it's going to be probably decent against those, um, against small creatures it's going to be decent because even in the early game you're going to be able to kill them, against big creatures it's going to, uh, unless the opponent, uh, it's an interesting removal, it's very interesting, it's hard to evaluate but I think it's, if we were going to put in a rating for it it would probably be like a 6-7 I would say, but it's decent removal, probably wouldn't pick it too early, but I would definitely be glad to have one of these in my deck. Go blank, 2 and a black for sorcery, is this the mind rot of the set? Target player discards 2 cards, it is the mind rot of the set. Uh, then exile all cards on the player's graveyard. Um, I'm never a fan of mind rot, I'm never a fan of mind rot in the main deck. Uh, it's good sideboard against the slower decks, uh, it's good in, in sealed, all good, it's medium plus in sealed. Uh, exiling your opponent's graveyard is going to have some play to it, but probably more in Constructed than in Limited. Uh, the card is Cyborg or Sealed. Mm, do not look for this card in Arena, best of one especially, not excited. Uh, hunt for Specimens, one in the black for Sorcery. Create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest that gains a life when he dies, and you learn. So 2 mana for a 1-1, one, one. yikes, you get to learn, you have a couple of lessons, one at least is good enough to fetch, I think then it might be okay, but mm, not excited. This is probably going to be a no-no for me, probably never going to do my best to avoid playing this card. Not a fan. Uh, Lash of Malice, I've, I've actually seen this card, someone shared it on Twitter. 
Uh, Dark creature gets uh, so it's a one so it's a solo black mana for an instant. Dark creature gets plus two, minus two until end of turn. So you can use it as a combat trick to, um, to pump your creature, or you can use it as a removal spell. Because minus two does kill a, a decent amount of stuff. This card is decent. This card is definitely decent. I think pe some people are gonna underrate this card. I think definitely main deck board definitely would play it. Um, a couple of them. Um, especially if my creatures can also survive the minus two. If my creatures, if a lot of my creatures die to the minus two, I probably would wouldn't be so keen on the second copy, but the first copy for sure. Next, I have Leech Fanatic, one in the black for a human warlock two two. As long as your turn, he has Life Link, a bear with upside. Great, never too excited, never upset. It's a bear that has Life Link. You can swing the 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 race to 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 you. So yeah, fine card. Has Warlock, we've seen this, I can't remember exactly the card, but we've seen that this um, creature type does matter, so worth noting that. Next we have Mage Hunter, 3 in the black for 3-4 creature horror, uncommon. Whenever an opponent costs or, co cost or copies an instant sorcery spell, they lose one life. So he has like, reverse Magecraft. Would you call it Unmagecraft? Or Mega Magecraft? Anyway, um, so they're gonna lose a life whenever they cast an instant of sorcery. Uh, the body is mediocre at best, 3-4-4-4, four, 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 I guess in black that's a bit better, but that's it's probably going to be outclassed by a decent number of creatures. Um, it's going to be fine against the more lower to the ground, there's a good, you know, stay back kind of creature. The, the lose one life makes me want to have it as a top end in an aggressive deck, but at the same time the body doesn't make me want to have it as a top end of an aggressive deck. This card is confusing, um, not excited about it. I think that's that's my final verdict, just not excited. Next we have Mage Hunter's Onslaught, a 2-2 two two black sorcery that destroys target creature, already love it. When a creature blocks this turn, its controller loses one life. So you kill one of the creatures, one of the blockers, and then whatever the blocker they have will cost them one life. Um, this is fantastic removal. Like, 4 mana to destroy a creature, that's... I'm happy to play that in any deck. Although double black obviously makes it less splashable, as we've talked about in Mastery earlier. That's a lot more splashable. But in an aggressive deck where you're swinging in, any block doesn't have... The block doesn't have to die, loses 8 life, so it's every block is going to cost them a life. That's very good, this is a good finisher. And also just good removal, I like this card a lot. <coughs> Sorry. Next we have Necrotic Fumes, I love me some fumes, um, I do not, I am so sorry. One in double black for a lesson, as an additional cost to, additional cost to cast this spell, exile a creature you control, and exile a creature planeswalker. Mm, okay, so this makes me more excited no, for these 1-1 one, one black and green pests, we've seen a couple of them already. As fodder for this, uh, exiling is always great, 3 minutes exile is great. Um, it, I think this is one of the better lessons we've seen so far, obviously not counting the rares. I would definitely be happy to have it as a lesson in my board, and if I have enough tokens or mediocre creatures, it exiles a creature control, so let me just... You may reveal less you want to the game, put it into your hand to this card. Okay, so, it, you, so someone learns that when it's when it dies. Um, well, why did I even read about learn that I should have just read that it's when it dies? So, exiling the creature control does matter as well, because you can't have any recursion for it, and you won't be able to uh, get any die triggers as well. Other than that, this this is a good lesson. I would be happy to have it in my sideboard, and I would consider it in my main deck if I have enough, you know, um, disposable dudes. Next we have no Novice Dissector, 3 and a black for a Troll Warlock 3-3. Three, three. One man and sacrifice another creature, so another reason to have the 1-1 one, one pests. Put a plus 1 plus 1 on counter on target creature, so you can put in any creature, that's nice. We've seen a illusion, so you can kill an illusion with that, so if your opponent has it, you can make a creature of yours bigger. Activate only as a sorcery is a bit of a yikes. Not excited for this card, this card is medium to bad in my opinion. It's expensive, the body is not great, putting a plus one plus one counter is fine, it doesn't tap so you cannot sacrifice multiple creatures, but only being being able to do a sorcery speed is not great. Being able to target any creature not only itself is very good, but uh, not excited, don't don't really want to play this. 
can make that auric law mage 2 and 3 black for a creature human warlock 3-3. Three, three. You can tap there to search a library for a card, put into your graveyard, then shuffle. If you put an instant, put a counter on it. Why am I putting inst- I guess there are cards that I care about having instant and sorcery in my graveyard, but I'm losing an instant and sorcery from my deck that I probably are in my deck for me to cast them. Um, it's thinning my deck of, from, of spells instead of lands, which is what you usually want to do. Sure, it's getting bigger, but since I have to tap it, I probably can't attack with it for a couple of turns. I think this card is underwhelming. I feel like this card is going to be very underwhelming. Unless you have some way to recur the instance and sorcery, this card is just underwhelming in my opinion. But I could be wrong, but I, I, my initial thought is that this card is underwhelming, it's not going to be that good. Next I have Persis Pestilent Cauldron. Why can't I read? Two in a black. Artifact. Tap this card a card. Create a 1-1 one, one path that when it dies you gain a life. That's nice. Uh, tap one and tap. Each opponent mills a card. Mills cards equal to the amount of life you gain this turn. If you're getting enough life, sure, but that doesn't sound that great. Uh, four and tap, exile four target cards from a single graveyard, draw a card, mm, draw a card. This is gonna be good in long games, so we're talking about sealed, we're talking about grindy matchups, we're talking if we're playing a slower deck. Other than that, I'm not ex too excited about this card. Uh, maybe I'm underestimating the life gain in this format, but uh, eh, this card is okay, but in sealed especially, but in draft I'm not too excited. Uh, backside we have Restorative Birth, 3 and double green. For a sorcery, return them to 2 target creature, land and or planeswalkers. From your graveyard to your hand, and then each player gains 4 life and exile it. So this is some recursion for your creatures and lands, your planeswalkers are not going to come up. I actually like this backside more, mm, actually it's very expensive for creature recursion. I'm not so ex I mean, I th this looks like a peak sealed card rather than a draft card. Obviously in your slower grindier decks this card is going to be fine, but neither side is too exciting in my opinion. Next I have Plum the Forbidden. One in the black one instant. As an additional cost to cost a spell, you may sacrifice one or more creatures. When you do cut this spell for each creature sacrifice this way, you draw a card and you lose a life. So like, if I make a bunch of pests with something like this, or something like Hunt for Specimens, um, it's extra creatures I can sack, I can block and then sack them, and that's extra cards I'm drawing. Obviously it costs an extra life for ex in each extra card, but that's that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. This is decent, it feels more constructed and limited, but I think if you have enough tokens in your deck, if you have um, enough dud creatures, dud as in mediocre creature, this is going to be fine. It's also going to be good as a cyborg card against the removal of heavy deck, so this is a fine card, this is fine. Next we have Poet's Quill, one in the black for an artifact equipment. We haven't seen many equipment. When he enters battlefield, learn, so that's nice. Maybe it's nice, um, what should I call it, uh, flavor as well. So you can get a lesson from your cyborg or rummage, and creature gets plus one, plus one, and lifelink. Lifelink on equipment? That's huge. That's a good way to turn any race around because you can swing in with your lifelink creature and then equip another creature to block with lifelink as well. I really like this card and I feel like I'm probably going to way overvalue it and pick it, first pick it way too many times. But this card is definitely good. This is definitely good. Please tell me I'm wrong, but this card is definitely good. Ooh, now we have a Planeswalker. Professor Onyx, which is actually Liliana, so 4 and double black, a bit, a bit expensive, but 6 mana for uh, Planeswalkers is going to be fine and limited. With 5 loyalty, so it's a big, 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 thick Planeswalker. Has Magecraft, so that's a bit different for a black Planeswalker, but sure. Maybe cost an instant sorcery, each opponent loses 2 life and you gain 2 life, that's a decent life gain, that's a good way to stabilize as well. Uh, you may plus one to you to and and you lose a life. Look at the top three cards of library. You put one into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. So the plus one is card advantage. Sure. Minus three. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. With the cr so you you get rid of the um, most expensive creature, not necessarily the strongest creature. So that's nice. It leaves it down to two 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 loyalty. So that will probably can get beaten down from there. But minus three is nice. Giving your opponent the choice is never great, but I mean, it's 
not that much of a choice since it's the most expensive creature, but that's fine. Minus eight, so this is the the ultimate. Let's hope it's uh, it's, it's usually game winning. So each opponent may discard a card. If they don't, they lose three life. Repeat this process six more times, so you do it seven times. So they either gonna discard seven cards, or they're gonna lose three life for each card they don't discard. So that's probably game winning, not necessarily actually. I might just prefer keep plucking it honestly, unless it's gonna win me the game. Um, it's a planeswalker. What can I say? This card is great. You're gonna play in your draft decks, obviously not in your aggressive decks, and you're gonna play in every CO deck. If you open this in CO, it's gonna be in your deck, and if it's not in your deck. Either you have a very good aggressive deck in it, or you made a mistake. But yeah, this card is great, it's a Planeswalker, there's not much more to say about a Planeswalker in Limited. Professor's Warning for a single black man is an instant. Choose one, put a plus one plus one count on target creature, or so a creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Mm, I like the second part more than I like the first part, but I do like the, the versatility. It's it's an okay combat track. There are better ones, um, but I, I wouldn't be opposed to play this combat track. I think this combat track is going to be fine. I do like the second line more. The indestructible thing is going to come up way more often than putting just putting a plus one plus one counter. But yeah, I think this is a fine one. Um, again, it's like a twenty third card in your deck. I don't think it's it's an early pick. You're probably going to table this card or table. I forget what the other words are. The card's gonna come around often, so I think this this is a fine card, medium-ish card. Actually, let's let's say it like that. But yeah, the second line I feel like it's a lot more, it's a lot better than the first one. Nice of promising dusk mage, two and a black for a two-three creature human warlock. When it dies, if it had a counter, draw a card. So there's obviously the plus one plus one counter in black and white. Uh, a two-three for three is nothing to write home about, but if you have enough ways to put counters on creatures. Um, this gets a lot better. A three four for three you got if you got a obviously I'm talking about like easy ways to get counter, I don't want you to be wasting a whole card to get a counter in it and then get blown up by removal. But if you have easy ways to get counters on your creatures, this is a decent uh, role player in that deck. If you don't have ways to get counters in your deck, um, do not play this card. A two three for three is not good. Next up Sedgemore Witch for two and a black is a three two human warlock with menace. He has ward, so instead of so whenever he becomes a target of a spell and ability upon controls, he gets countered unless they pay three life. Usually they're gonna have to have life. They gonna they're going to have enough life to pay for it, so that's fine. But you know, uh, adding an extra adding a lightning bow to 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 your creature dying seems fine. Whenever you cast a copy and instant sorcery spell, create a token. I love this card. I adore this card. If, if, even with like Professor's Warn, you can protect it. You make you make your opponent lose three life to try and kill it. You can protect it and get a token for your troubles. This card is great. This is a very exciting card. You probably want like some number of um, incident sorceries, but even then, even without them, a three two with menace for three that makes your opponent lose three life to kill it. That's already good on its own. This card is fantastic. The the mage cross is really good and, and if you can trigger a couple of times in the game that's really really good. It gives you fodder for um something like an um, the necrotic fumes and novice dissector and a few other cards. It gives you life gain for other cards as well, so this is a good card. These two we already covered in the white um review. Now we're gonna look at Spectre of Defense. So for three and a black is a two three creature spectre with flying. Target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Three mana for two three flying is okay. It's not great. It's it's okay. Um, we've seen a couple of uh, one power flyers with three toughness, so that gets makes this less good. But uh, it has a good mana sink for sealed, so I'm very excited about this card in sealed. In draft, if there's board spells, this is good. 6 mana obviously is expensive, but you're gaining life as well as taking opponent's life, but I think gaining life is also very important to note. Um, not excited about this in draft unless I'm bringing it from the sideboard or my deck is slow enough, but um, I'm happy to have it in my sealed decks. I think that's that's how, I, how I'm on this card right now. Uh, tenured Incaster. Oh, I love this art. From Is that Jake or is that Yake? It's probably Jake, and I'm just an idiot thinking it's gonna be Yake. What if it's an, what if it's an Yake? 
and that's the name is Murray, so I'm assuming they're English American or some from some English speaking country. So yeah, it's probably Jake Murray. <laughs> Murray. <laughs> so it's four in the black for a two two creature vampire warlock. So that's a very bad value so far. When he enters, put a plus one plus one count on target creatures. So yeah, it's worth it's a five minus three three, which is not good. When a creature with plus one plus one counter on its attacks, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. This, if you're very deep in the counters deck, the plus one plus one counters deck that is, it's probably a good finisher. If you're not that deep, I feel like this card is going to be mediocre most times. A 3-3 three, three, for 5 does not impact the board enough, and if you're not triggering the second ability a lot, or well, not quite a few times at least, because otherwise this card is just horrible. So this is again another kind of role player. If I'm deep in black white counters, I'm happy to have it as my top end. Otherwise, uh, just chuck it in the bin because three three for five men is nowhere where I want to be in my life. Uh, Umbro Juke. So Juke with our friend Jake. Uh, two in a black instant. Choose one target pre target player sacrifice a creature. That's good at instant speed. I like that. I like the, that he's holding like a frog or something. Create a 2 1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. So, I would be more excited about this second part as we haven't seen so many flyers that kind of uh, roadblock this. I do like that it makes the opponent sacrifice a creature uh, at instant speed. Um, I'm okay to have it in my deck. I'm ha I think I'm, yeah, I think this is definitely a very, is a very playable card, giving you options. It's good if the opponent doesn't have flyers, it's a good way to kind of put a clock on them. And the removal is never bad. Uh, just be careful if you're running the bad pacifism or any way that kind of locks the creatures into play. Or if your opponent has a lot of tokens, this card gets a lot, lot worse. But if your opponent is just playing a, some big fatties, why do I say fatties like that sometimes? Anyways, um, this card gets a lot better. So yeah, this this is a good card. I'm excited about this one. Unwilling ingredient, one in the black for one one frog with menace. It's a very menacing frog. I would not touch that frog. Probably poisonous. Uh, so two in a black, you exile it from a graveyard, you draw a card, and you lose a life. Uh, one one menace for one is whatever. If you have ways to put counters, uh, this is a good target to put counters on with in your black white counters deck because menace is annoying to be blocked. Yeah, I wish you had death touch instead of menace because it's frog and it looks poisonous, but that's just me. Um, and this ability is nice, especially if you have, if you, if you have a, uh, we've seen a few ways to sacrifice creatures, and you're from, you sacrifice your own creatures, so being able to draw a card later on in the game from it at instant speed is nice. Uh, role player, not an early pick, in my opinion, and you can probably easily end up with like four in your deck if you're not careful, they probably reproduce through osmosis. Okay, our last card here is Valentine, Dean of the Vein. So for singular black mana, you get a 1-1 one, one Menace Lifelink Vampire Warlock. With, if a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. So that's already nice for recursion, so you stop the recursion. When you do, you may pay 2. If you do, you create a token. Um, okay, that's fine. It's Menace Lifelink 1-1 one, one for 1. It's like, sure, if you can put, again, like, a, like the frog, it's a good creature to put your counters on, even better because of the lifelink. The ability is nice, um, because if you're to trading combat, you're getting a creature, obviously you need to pay the mana, it's a bit expensive, but um, yeah, it's, it's a fine card, it's a fine card, not not too great. If uh, I would like it in a blue, uh, um, black-white uh, counters deck to make it thicker. So the back side have Lisette, Lisette, Lysette, Lysette, uh, I'm gonna call you Lysa, we have Lysa, Lisa, um, Dean of the Root, we have Dean of the Root for 2 and 2 green, a 4-4 four, four legendary human druid. Whenever you gain life, you may pay 1. If you do put a count on each creature you control, each creature you control, that's fantastic. That's awesome. That, w that plays into the into the past green deck, green black deck, with the, you know, those pasties, past, well, give me a past. I don't know why past or uh, past 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 the, with the pests from the green black deck and he plays well with the plus one plus one counters in the green white deck so you can probably play your adzone with this 
really love this card. This card is very, very good. I actually prefer the back side. You can also just play this in a black, white deck or whatever. Anything that has life gain. This card is very good. Pumping your whole board and even giving trample to them. Fantastic. So that's it for the black cards. Let me know what you guys think of these cards. What you disagree with. And which card of these you're most excited about. We're going to be bringing in red, green, multicolor, and artifact. And then mystical archives next. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time. See ya.